Shakespeare, isn't it? Oh, yes. Miss Jones, will you accompany me to the theatre? Smith, I will. During the 1560s, most theater was performed in the courtyards of inns, but right around 1575, James Burbage, the father of one of Shakespeare's company mates, decided to build an actual theater. The globe, as you can see, was a wooden O with an open-air courtyard in the middle. The stage was a thrust stage on which the actors could be surrounded on three sides by the audience. The people on the audience were called groundlings and can pay one penny to watch the play from the ground. Or, for a little bit more, you could watch from one of the three lo levels of balcony seats, which would probably also buy you a cushion for about five pence. The stage at the Globe Theater had a roof as well as a balcony, and there were many trap doors in the ceiling as well as in the floor for lowering actors or for inserting actors onto the stage. Also, the balconies behind the stage were used in many of Shakespeare's plays with balcony scenes, and sometimes the royalty could actually sit on the stage. The Tiring House also featured a flag at the very top, which is the way that many plays were announced. If the flag was flying, a play was playing. And upcoming plays were often announced via signs in the courtyard. In, in the late 20th century, director Sam Wanamaker launched a project to rebuild the Globe Theatre. The one you see here today was finished in the mid-1990s it was built using original techniques and in fact it's the first building in London since the Great Fire of 1666 to have a thatched roof. Every summer there's a season of Shakespeare's works. You can either stand in the pit under the open air or take shelter under the thatch in the balconies. Go to the box office and check if they've got any tickets or take a fascinating tour around the theatre and all the backstage areas. Settle thy studies, Faustus, and begin to sound the depth of that thou wilt profess. Having commenced, be a divine in show, yet level at the end of every art, and live and die in Aristotle's works. You do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints' lips, and holy palmer's too? Aye, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. I pray, grant thou lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. And indecency. Master the Revel, sir. She's over here. Where, boy? There. I saw her bubbies. So, a woman on the stage. A woman! I say this theatre is closed. Why, sir? For lewdness and unshamefacedness, and for displaying a female on the public stage. But no, it's there to help the actor. It's full of little hints from Shakespeare about how to act a given speech or scene. It's a stage direction in shorthand. So let's try to find out how his verse works. Don't let's ask what it is, for it's nothing static, but let's ask what goes on in it. Shakespeare was an actor, and his verse is above all a device to help the actor. It doesn't necessarily or always have something to do with poetry, though it often does. But at the beginning, we can forget that. Now, how do you all think that it helps you as actors? 
Well, it helps, it helps the actor to learn the lines. It helps to give him his phrasing. Blank verse makes a pattern on the page which is easier for the mind to retain. And it's also full of directorial hints. Mm -hmm. And because verse is a more economical way than prose of saying something, it's likely to be more concise and more particular and exact. And at the same time, because a verse has a rhythm to it, a flow, it's perhaps more attractive to the audience to listen to and helps the actor to keep his, the attention of the audience. And the punctuation um, gives you your naturalistic breathing spaces, which also helps to release the meaning of the line and also gives you clues to the emotional state that your character is in. So it gives you a lot. Yes. Yeah, but it, <clears throat> you're all talking about verse. But what we mean is not verse in the usual sense of rhymes or couplets or other verse forms, which Shakespeare only uses very rarely, but blank verse. Good. Bailey. She said I'd three bouts of the plague in this place. We'll run like rats. But what could have scared her so? She had such enormous spirit. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. I might use that. You can't. It's someone else's. But the thing is, Lindley drowned on dry land. Dolly died of fright, and they were both connected to you. You're accusing me? No, but I saw a witch. Big as you like, flying, cackling away, and you've written about witches. I have? When was that? No. Not quite yet. Peter Street spoke of witches. Who's Peter Street? Our builder. He sketched the plans to the globe. The architect. Hold on, the architect. The architect! The globe! Come on! The columns there, right? 14 sides. I've always wondered, but I've never... It was the shape Peter Street thought best, that's all. Said he carried the sound well. 14. What does that ring about, 14? There's 14 lines in the sonnet. Oh, so there is. Good point. Words and shapes following the same design. Fourteen lines, fourteen sides, fourteen facets. Oh, my head. Tetradecagon. Dick, dick, dick. Words, letters, numbers, lines. This is just the theatre. Oh, yeah, but the theatre's magic, isn't it? Who should know? Stand on this stage. Say the right words with the right emphasis at the right time. Oh, you can make men weep. Or cry with joy. Change them. You can change people's minds just with words in this place. And if you exaggerate that... It's like your police box, small wooden box with all that power inside. Oh. Oh, Martha Jones, I like you. Tell you what, though, Peter Street would know. Can I talk to him? Won't give an answer. A month after finishing this place, lost his mind. Why, what happened? Started raving about witches, hearing voices babbling. His mind was addled. Where's he now? Bedlam. What's Bedlam? Bethlehem Hospital. The Madhouse. We're gonna go there, right now. Come on! Wait! I'm to witness this at first hand. Ralph! The last scene is promised. Copy it, hand it round, learn it, speak it, back before curtain up. And remember, kid, project eyes and teeth. You never know. The queen might turn up. As if. She never does.